So the last part of this lecture for today is about apiters. And I'm going to introduce apiters, what they are. I mentioned them in the beginning. But uh, we will learn how to create them. So what is an apiter? So what we've done, and this is really work of Daniel Clark, which, who is a data scientist in the lab. Uh, he came up with this idea of taking a Jupyter notebook and converting it to a web app. And this way you enable biologists uh, that don't have any coding skills to execute Jupyter notebooks with their data. So they come in with the data, they load it into the apiter, and then they press submit, and then they get a report with analysis of their data. So in order to do it, we created this uh, software package that is called Apiter. What you need to do, you need to take your notebook and specify within your notebook some global variables that when you compile that notebook, it will build a website for you. But before that, let's install the Apiter like using this command the Apiter package or software development kit. Once the, you are developing an Apiter, what we've done is that when we created those Apiters, we published them on this Apiters catalog. And you can go to this site and see that there are about 100 of those Apiters. In your free time, you can explore some of those Apiters and what they do. They're sorted by their popularity. So Alex, I uh, see that Prism X is one of the popular apiters, which is great. And it was developed by Alex. He will talk to you about it in at his lecture. So again, this is sort of like how those apiters work. You have this report. You, you build your Jupyter notebook as it is, and then you insert into the notebook those fields. You substitute variables with those fields that will show you how to do then you launch the Apiter. And then once it's ready and launched, you bring in your data and then you submit it. And using some uh, Python libraries that are associated with those Jupyter Notebooks, the Jupyter Notebooks get filled with your data and gets executed. And then you see the results on, on the browser. To set up those uh, additional parts, which are called Apiter Magics, uh, we use this Jinja templating language. It's a little bit, I don't know if you guys are familiar with PHP, but it's a way to add templating into your code. And then uh, this is sort of like what it looks like. It has this pound percent percent type of closing and opening segments. And in there, you specify your templating and what you want to put in and then when uh, it gets compiled, this the compiler or the code that uh, converts it to a regular Jupyter notebook knows what to do. So the Apiter magic cells, they are added to the notebook and they can be of four different types. So there is this markdown type that adds markdown that, it, that you can template. There is hide cells. Those are cells that you're not going to see, but they are in the notebook. And then the most important ones are those code exec cells. And those is substituting variables from your Python notebook into those web-based HTML form input elements. And we'll see what they are exactly in a second. And then these code eval cells, which are very similar to the cells that you see in, when the Jupyter Notebook is executed. So this is uh, those four different types of Apiter magics and what, what they look like when you execute them at different stages. So when you build your Apiter and you're looking at in a form, like a, the web-based form that we'll see in a second, they look something like this, like Markdown, My Description. And then when you execute the notebook, markdown cell becomes text in your notebook. Hide, you don't see. So it's not even here. The third, this code exec is actually converting whatever you put in in the input form is populating the variable text with the data. And then the fourth one is very similar. So what are we going to do, last part of the lecture today, 
is we're going to take the notebook that we went over that compares those two data sets and we convert it into an editor. So you'll be able to come in and upload two data files from Harmonizome or two gene set libraries and then compare them and generate some of those figures that Ido created, those heat maps, and also find the top associations that are identified when you cross those two data sets. And we will use the CCLE and Kinome scan data sets as the example data sets. So the first thing to do is to create those new cells. So one of the new cells is Apiter hide code. And then there is this other cell that replaces the fetching of the file from Harmonizome, the specifically CCLE file from Harmonizome with a button way to locate the file and upload it and then unzip it. So this is the one part of the Apiter. So here is uh, what to do next is to type on the command line Apiter and then the name of the file. So the name of the file might not be exactly the same. I think it has the date, like today's date on added to it. So if you can type Apiter and then Apiter file name. So what you should see in the browser is a web form that has those two upload input uh, forms that will give you an example. So you can load the CCLE and the Kinome scan example files, but you can also bring on your own data sets or you can get some data sets from Harmonizome or Enricher. And then you can um, press submit. And then once you press submit, you get a report. And then that report generates those data sets. So here, for example, we used the CCLE still from the original example, but also instead of using the Kinome scan, we use the Chia transcription factor targets data set. And here we identify transcription factor targets that overlap with highly expressed genes in those cell lines. So we can potentially find the transcription factor drivers that are regulating the genes that are highly expressed in those cell lines. And then Edo also did some literature search for the top match transcription factor cell line pairs, where he found how, for example, PAX3 is regulating these RH41 cells and FOXA2 is critical for uh, cell identity of FG2 liver cells or liver cell line. So these are just a summary of the changes that were made to the original notebook uh, to make it an apiter. So here you can see that we also importing the apiter and the apiter magic. So we have to add those two lines. And also here you have this IPython display file link import. And then these are the replacement. Instead of fetching the data from Harmonizome, we're creating those magic file upload components for the CCLE and the kind of scan. But in general, it's making it more general purpose input forms. So just to summarize, we modified the Jupyter Notebook and made it into an adapter. We generalized the variable names and descriptions. We added these file fields, a replacement for the input of the data sets. We kept the CCLE and kind of scan data sets as the default, but you can use it for comparing any pair of data sets that are available in this format of a gene set library. And we did an example with Chia and CCLE combining those two. And these are some of the resources to get you going. And that's it.